Yo, what's up guys? It's me, Zach Lee, back bringing some more daily NBA news. You guys already know that you are the real MVPs. We're coming back each and every single day. But now let's just take a quick look at what went down yesterday. ESPN is at it again. Breaking news just came out this morning saying that LeBron James would consider signing with the Golden State Warriors if the Warriors were able to clear the cap space needed to sign LeBron James this summer. Out of respect for the Warriors winning culture, James would listen if Golden State explored ways to clear the necessary cap space, sources said as you guys can probably imagine after this article was published the nba world went insane some people were freaking losing their mind i don't know why i don't even think i'm going to spend that much time talking about this because i'm beyond skeptical that this is actually true For real if this report had you freaking out then i need you to hit me up after this video because i got some magic beans some magic corn chips and some magic toenail clippers that i need to sell to you they even said in the article that there is no indication that Golden State is evaluating such options to acquire the Cleveland Cavaliers star at this time. They legit said right there that this is basically fake. Other than that though, all this article talked about was ways in which the Golden State Warriors could clear enough cap space in order to actually sign LeBron James. A sign and trade scenario would be the most realistic way for Golden State to acquire James. The Warriors could build an offer on Klay Thompson and Andre Iguodala to match salary and tempt the Cavaliers into making a deal. So there was that and then they went on to say that that still wouldn't be enough that in order for this to work, Kevin Durant would have to decline his player option and take even less money than he already took to stay with the team last summer in order to get LeBron James to stay there and on top of that they'd also have to move the contract of Sean Livingston and after all of that they could only afford to then fill out the depleted bench as well as their starting shooting guard spot with league minimum players just to entertain this for a quick second this would be beyond ridiculously dumb on the end of the Golden State Warriors why on earth would they deplete their entire team to sign LeBron James I get that it's LeBron James the best player in the world right now but they don't freaking need LeBron James LeBron would need the Warriors more than the Warriors would need LeBron and on that note why on earth would LeBron James even consider for a second destroying his legacy by joining the Golden State Warriors I guarantee you if he were to join the Warriors not a single person would give him credit for a single ring that he would win there and on top of that the case for LeBron being the greatest to ever play the game would just be out the window there could be no more case for that I don't even need to say much else to me this wasn't even a reach by ESPN since it didn't really stem from anything factual. This is a completely hypothetical situation created, fabricated by ESPN to generate some clicks. Moving on, the Milwaukee Bucks are still looking to upgrade their center position. They do need a better center as well as some more help off the bench. Those are really the only two major things stopping the Bucks from taking that next leap and maybe becoming championship contenders. And plenty of rumors have been coming out since the beginning of the season linking the Milwaukee Bucks to DeAndre Jordan. However, However, talks have died down since then. There haven't really been much traction gain, so I doubt that DeAndre Jordan winds up on the Bucks at this point. Which is okay because now we have reports saying that the Bucks have changed their target to Hassan Whiteside, which I personally think will be better for the Bucks. Whiteside is a guy who can do what DJ does plus more. He's comfortable firing up shots up to 15 feet away from the rim. Right now he's averaging close to 15 points, 12 rebounds, and one and a half blocks per game and only playing around 20 minutes per game in Miami. So maybe he could do even more on a team like the Bucks. And I do generally think he will be a great fit for the Bucks. As for what Milwaukee would have to give up in exchange to get Hassan Whiteside, according to the report, the deal would not be done without the Bucks, including Jabari Parker. The Bucks continue to be mentioned in NBA circles is having eyes for Miami's Hassan Whiteside. It's hard to imagine either deal gets done without the inclusion of Parker. So the Bucks getting the chance to see him on the court for a few games before the deadline may go a long way in cementing their decision. Parker will be making his debut for the Bucks Friday. So maybe this is why they decided to bring him back right now instead of waiting a couple weeks till after the All-Star break so they could see how he fits in with their new chemistry that they have on this team. And as well as if he plays, it might boost his trade stock so they will be able to trade him for a guy like Hassan Whiteside. A few videos ago, I mentioned the fact that the Boston Celtics could be landing Tyreek Evans before the NBA trade deadline. And that is still true. They very well could trade for Tyreek Evans. Uh, he's actually one of the most coveted players in the NBA right now. One report even saying that half of the NBA is interested in trading for him. And other reports saying more specifically that the Sixers, Thunder, Cavs, Heat, Rockets, and Celtics are the main teams looking to get Evans at the moment. Which would make sense for all those teams to be interested in getting him. And it's not every day that a guy who's 
putting up 25 and 5 while only making the league minimum becomes available for a trade. Thing is though, how much are these teams going to be willing to give up to get Tyreek Evans? Of course, the Memphis Grizzlies say they want a first round draft pick for him, but since so many teams are interested, it's going to cost them much more than just a first round draft pick to land him at this point because pretty much all those teams can give up a first round draft pick. So now it comes down to what else they're willing to give up as well as that first round draft pick and a deal might actually be close to getting done as they announced yesterday that they'll be sitting out Tyreek Evans until a trade is finished another low-key great pickup for some playoff teams looking to add depth at their center position could be Greg Monroe as he was just bought out from the final year of his contract by the Phoenix Suns last night so he is now free to sign wherever he wants and I'm sure a lot of NBA fans scoff when they hear the name Greg Monroe like what has that guy ever done who is he what's he doing I thought he was riding the end of the Phoenix Suns bench you know Oh, yes he hasn't been very relevant in the NBA but don't get it twisted the guy can still produce given the opportunity on the year so far he's putting up around 10 points and 7 rebounds in only 20 minutes per game and is capable of having some very big games he can be a more than serviceable big man in the league and there are already a couple of teams interested in adding Greg Monroe the New Orleans Pelicans who have been desperately looking for another big man ever since DeMarcus Cousins went down and also the Boston Celtics and I could see him signing with the Boston Celtics if they really are interested. They could use a guy off the bench like him who can score in the post and grab some rebounds. And is also a pretty solid passer for a big man as well. The only real flaw in Greg Monroe's game is his defense. He's pretty much an Anis Cantor. But Brad Stevens being such a great defensive coach, I'm sure he can find some way to at least make Greg Monroe just a tad bit better on that end of the floor. I'm curious to know what you guys think about all of this though as always you can make your opinions heard down in the comment section below but now let's take a real quick look at the games from last night before last night only one player in nba history had ever scored at least 50 points in less than 30 minutes of game time and that player was clay thompson last year when he scored 60 points in 29 minutes after last night though there are now two players who have accomplished this clay thompson and CJ McCollum as he dropped a career high 50 points in 29 minutes. 28 of those points came in the first quarter alone, a Blazers franchise record for most points scored in a quarter. Human torch mode activated and the reason for his performance, his 92 year old great aunt was visiting Portland for the first time. My great aunt's here, she's 92, so it's her first, first time seeing the game. Mm -hmm. Here, she's been to games in LA. CJ, you need to make sure you bring someone new to Portland for the first time every game. And he also said that he would have been fine just scoring 40, but his teammates were telling him that he had to score 50. There wasn't any urge to chase Dame's record or no? no? <laughs> I'm not even chasing records, man. I just want to win. Uh, so even throughout the game, I was thinking, like, I looked up and I was like, oh, I can get like 40. And then they was like, no, you need to get 50. And Dame was like, you get 50. And I was like, okay. I'll get 50 here. 18 of 25 from the field, 50 points in three quarters. Jeez. And the Blazers, of course, got the win. 124 to 108. It was over in the first quarter. Prayers up. The injury bug in the NBA is back and it's really trying to end careers. Isaiah Cannon, get well soon. Early on in the Suns versus Mavericks game, Isaiah Cannon attempts to drive to the rim for a layup, and then this happened. It was like Gordon Hayward. 2.0. You know it's a terrible injury when other players on the court have to look away or just drop to their knees because they can't believe what they just saw. This is really hard to watch, but uh, yeah, I, the Suns still won the game 102 to 88. Josh Jackson has really been playing well for the past few games, by the way. He dropped 21 points and grabbed eight rebounds. Kyrie Irving set this game out and Terry Rozier got the start and with this opportunity he for sure made the most of it the man balled out getting his first career triple double with 17 points 11 rebounds and 10 assists and the celtics blow 103 to 73 win over the knicks it's just not meant to be every time the heat have a chance to steal the number three seed away from the Cavs, they come up short and that included last night when they came up short to the Cavs. as jay crowder hit a triple with a little over a minute left in the game to give the Cavs the lead for good 91 to 89 the final score LeBron with 24 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 assists. Wayne Selden was on fire. Marcus Gasol was playing really well, and the Grizzlies still lost to the Pacers, 105-101. to Bogdanovich 
was the high man for Indy with 21 points, while Turner chipped in 15 points, 11 rebounds, and 3 blocks. The Sixers could for sure use a guy like Tyreek Evans coming off their bench. They have TJ McConnell, who delivers a big performance every now and then, but other than that, they don't have much firepower on their bench at all. They lost the Nets last night, 116 to 108. Spencer Dinwiddie with 27 points, and Jared Allen recorded 16 points and 12 rebounds. When is Lonzo coming back? That's the real question here. Feels like he's been out forever. The Lakers got blown out by the Magic, 127 to 105 as they allowed Maurice Bates to drop 21 points in Orlando. Another question, why on earth did you sign Maurice Spates again? Like that's that's a legit question. I want to know the answer to that one. Dwight Howard caught a body. Nick Batum had a triple double and Kemba Walker hit a career high nine triples to score 38 points as the Hornets once again beat the Hawks 123 to 110. That wraps up all the action from last night though. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, don't forget to smack that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more daily NBA news as well as join the quest 200k hashtag a million a year. Remember to vote for the player of the day, but also remember the only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day. And of course, who else will be the player of the day yesterday besides James Harden and his historic 60 points, 11 assists, and 10 rebounds. Thank you once again for watching. I'll see all of you right back here tomorrow for more NBA news, but until then, I am out of here. Peace!